السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا قال رب شح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم زدنا علما All praise and thanks is due to Allah عز وجل Peace and salutations upon Muhammad ibn Abdullah صلوات الله وسلامه عليه Peace and salutations upon his family upon his friends and upon and all those who try to emulate him until the end of time. In today's video, which is our last video, we will be looking at the etiquette of Eid. And as we know, like we discussed in Ramadan, and as we'll be discussing today as well, that this year the Eid celebration is a bit different because of the situation that we find ourselves in and many masajid are still closed many, many places that used to have the idga yani outside in the musallas they are not <coughs> having this as well and those masajid that are open they are advising the elderly those that's over 60 etc to stay at home and the young children as well also the women and the sisters to pray at home so a question that always comes up is that can we make the Eid Salah at home and the answer is yes you can so what is the description in the first raka'ah he should make the Tadbiratul Ihram which is the start of the Salah yani Allahu Akbar and then he would be making seven Takbirat after that in the second raka'ah he should make five Takbirat apart from the takbir of ruku Aisha radiyallahu anha she says that the takbir of Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha is seven takbirs in the first raka'ah and five takbirs in the second raka'ah apart from the takbir of ruku and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best the second point is what should we recite during this salah during the Eid salah and in the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that in the first raka'ah he would recite surah al-a'la yani sabbih isma rabbika al-a'la and in the second raka'ah he would recite surah al-ghashia hal ataka hadith al-ghashia also there are some narrations where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he would recite surah al-qaf in the first raka'ah and surah al-qamr in the second raka'ah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best so what is easier for the imam and easier on the people he should do with regards to the khutbah for someone that is making the eid salah at home then there is no <coughs> reports that he should be making the khutbah as the khutbah is for the imam alone and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best so for those that are going to the masajid etc there are certain sunan of eid that we need to fulfill as for those staying at home should they fulfill certain sunnahs and the answer is yes so number one is to do a ghusl that we should do a ghusl before going out to the eid prayer whether we are making at home or in the masjid and this was narrated or we find this hadith in the Muwatta of Imam Malik that Abdullah ibn Umar he used to ghusl on the day of Eid before going out to the place of prayer. The second point that I would like to highlight with regards to the Sunan that it is mustahab not to eat anything until one comes back from the Eid prayer and this is with regards to Eid al-Adha and this is the Eid that we are going to be witnessing <coughs> either on Friday or on Saturday so he should not eat anything before right he should before he goes out contrary to Eid al-Fitr Eid al-Fitr we eat a date or odd number of dates we have some water etc before we go to the prayer and with regards to Eid al-Adha he will not eat anything until he comes back from the prayer and he should try to eat from his udhiya which is his kurbani, his sacrifice and this is a recommended sunnah to slaughter a sheep or a goat or participate in the shares of a camel or a cow which is 
seven shares and Allah knows best. The third sunnah, and this is a very important one as well, with regards to the takbir on the day of Eid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions and he says, وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْدُودَاتِ And remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during these appointed days. And the appointed days, yani the day of Eid, also the days of Tashriq. This is one of the greatest sunan on the days of Eid and the days of Tashriq. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he mentioned and he says that the days of Tashriq are the days of eating, drinking and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have the day of Eid, which is the 10th of the Hijjah. And then the days of Tashriq are the three days afterwards, the 11th, the 12th and the 13th, ending at sunset. And Allah knows best. It is narrated, or it was narrated that Al-Walid ibn Muslim said that I asked Imam Al-Awza'i and Malik ibn Anas about saying the takbir out loud on the two days. And they said, yes, Abdullah ibn Umar, he used to say it out loud on the day of Eid, Ulfitr until the Imam came out to lead the praise. In the case of Eid al Adha, the Takbir begins on the first day of Dhul Hijjah and it lasts until sunset on the last day of Tashriq, and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. So, what is the description of the Takbir? It was narrated in the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba with a Sahih Isnad from Ibn Mas'ud that he used to recite the takbir during the days of Tashriq and he would say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar so he's repeating Allahu Akbar twice La ilaha illallah wa Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd it is also narrated that he would repeat the Allahu Akbar thrice also we find <coughs> that Ibn Mas'ud would say Allahu Akbar kabira Allahu Akbar Kabira, Allahu Akbar wa Ajallu, Allahu Akbar wa Lillahi Hamd. All praise, oh Allah the Most Great is indeed, Allah Most Great indeed, Allah is Most Great and Glorified, Allah is Most Great and to Allah is all praise. And there are a few other narrations which are all valid bi Ta'ala. The time of Takbir. With regards to Eid al-Adha, the time of Takbir, we can look at two categories. Number one, the Takbir at any time. So this has no limit to a specific time or place, etc. And it is Sunnah to render the Takbir all the time, whether it's the morning, the evening, before prayer, after prayer, etc. etc. Then we have something which is known as specific times, Takbir at the specific time. This is the Takbir that is limited to time immediately after prayer and Allah knows best. It is a sunnah to recite the takbir at any time during the first 10 days of the Hijjah and all the days of Tashriq. Starting from the beginning of the month of the Hijjah, yani from sunset of the last day of the Qa'da until the days of Tashriq have ended, which is the 13th day of the Hijjah when the sun sets. With regards to the certain or specific times, it starts from Fajr on the day of Arafah on the 9th of Dhul Hijjah and lasts until the sun sets on the last day of the day of Tashriq which is the 13th of Dhul Hijjah. In addition to the Takbir that may be recited at any time so when a person says the Taslim after his obligatory Salah. So now we are looking at what happens after the Salah. So someone, he makes salah to Fajr, he makes salah to Dhuwar, Asr, etc. He makes the salam. After the Fard, what must he do? He must first make his adhkar. He first makes, says, Allah, Manta, Salam, etc. He makes his adhkar and then he will make the takbir. And this is according to the most correct opinion. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. 
The next point with regards to the Sunan and Eid is offering congratulations, Saint Eid Mubarak, Saint Eid Saeed, etc. And this is the etiquette, and this was taught to us by the companions that they would wish one another taqabbal Allahu minna wa minkum. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept good deeds from us and from you. Jubair ibn Nufair he mentioned that the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when they met one another on the day of Eid they would say taqabbal Allahu minna wa minkum Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani he said that this isnad is hasan and you will find this in Fathul Bari so we should congratulate each and every one on the day of Eid and obviously the men folk with the men and the females with the females unless they are maharam to one another then you are allowed to shake hands etc and also what to exactly say on the day of Eid as a form of congratulations this goes yani, to your urf so you can say Eid Mubarak, Eid Sa'id anything with a good meaning my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam the next important point with regards to the Sunan is adorning oneself on the occasion of Eid it was narrated that Jabir radiallahu an he said that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he had a cloak which he would wear on the two Eids and on a Friday and a point regarding adorning oneself that we should wear the best of our clothes we should wear the best of our perfumes this is for the males as for the females yes you will wear the best of your clothes accord but in conformity with the sharia it is no use that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether it was Eid al-Fitr so you worship the whole month of Ramadan or now when it's Eid al-Adha and it is the days of the Hijjah you fasted you gave sadaqah you recited Quran you remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with takbir, with tahleel, with tahmeed. And then the day of Eid comes and we tend to wear clothing that is not appropriate for a Muslim female. This is not allowed. And secondly also that there should be no wearing of perfume for our female sisters. The wearing of perfume is only for the house and if they are mahram, if they are people that is not your mahram or you leave the house then it is not permissible for you to be wearing perfume and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. For those that are going out to the masjid or to the idgas, to the musallas, then the next sunnah is for all of you that are leaving your house. That when you go to the prayer, you would go in with one route and when you return try to take another route what is the reason for this the reason for this is that so the people can see that it is the day of Eid and that also the grounds can be a testimony to you on the day of resurrection and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that on the day of resurrection he resurrects us with the Anbiya and the Salihin, the Shuhada, and all those that have done well in this dunya. The last point with regards to Eid, and this is with regards to the Udhiyah, sacrifice, Qurbani. And we're not going to go into too much detail because I've dealt with this in the past videos in detail. But remember that we should try our utmost if we are by the means and we did not plan already to have at least one sheep slaughtered per family and this was the sunnah of Abu al-Anbiya Ibrahim alayhi salam and we discussed this in the past videos as well and this was the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that we should try to follow and fulfill my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam this leaves me to wish you well on the day of Eid, also we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us, to take us out from these difficulties that we are facing. And this is also the last video 
of our Dhul Hijjah series, if there was any khair and good that came from it, this is through the grace and the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. And if there were any errors or any mistakes, then this is from the shortcomings and from the influence of Shaitan. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to guide and protect us. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to forgive our shortcomings. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah. Astawfiruka wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.